everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. As you can see here, I'm going to talk about this rather lovely guitar. This is the Brian May Red Special. Um, it's not just the Red Special, it's the inexpensive one. It's in America, I believe it's about $700. It's about 600 pounds. Um, they're currently out of stock, actually. I just went on the website, but restocking in April. So I'm sure that's got a lot to do with the fact that uh, Queen are not only a huge band, but that movie, of course, has just, you know, probably got so many hundreds of thousands of people playing guitar, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, what do I love about this guitar? Well, obviously the history of the original is really, really, really amazing. The body was made out of a tabletop and the neck was made out of a mantelpiece over a fireplace. And he made it with his father. Brian made it with his father. There's some things about this guitar which are now very commonplace, but were not commonplace when this was designed. I think this was made very early 60s, you know, because Brian said that they didn't have the money to buy a Fender Strat or a Les Paul or anything glamorous like that. So they, out of necessity, built their own guitar. One of the things that's revolutionary is that this angle here is almost completely flat. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, in the 80s, when everybody got into using, you know, the whammy bar and doing big bends, on a lot of strats and telecasters and Les Pauls, because the neck angle was so severe, the strings would get stuck in the nut up here. With this almost completely flat angle, that really doesn't happen. A couple other things that are really wonderful about this, and I love, is the zero fret. Now, you might think, why? Well, the zero fret is great because of this. If I play an open chord... Firstly, it sounds freaking awesome. On the bridge pickup, using uh, Brian's version of the Burns Triasonic pickups. But, what is nice about it? Listen to this. Except for my bum note there, one more time. All the strings are really even. You might say, well, that's really obvious, Warren, why wouldn't they? Well, they're not on most guitars. Because when you play a guitar with just a nut and no zero fret, it's a different, it's a completely different surface to a fret. So, what do I mean by that? I'm fretting here second finger on the third fret. Then, there, and then an open. But they all sound super even because they've all are behind a fret. The open strings have a fret there. It's interesting, I was talking to the, uh, the amazing uh, guitar builder, Scott Baxendale, and said to him, how come more people don't use zero frets on their guitars? And he responded, people are starting to because they're starting to realize just how much more even it sounds. Think of like, or this. The ACDC trick in it. From that. That, you see how the open. Now, on most of my guitars, I go bing, 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 and that open note would just jump out. Now, everything's even because each, each string, whether it's open or not, has a fret creating it. Creating the note, sorry. Okay, as I touched on a second ago, these are Burns Triasonic pickups. They're Brian's version of them. They're quite a low output. They're not like super like metal like we got in the 80s where the magnets got huge and there was tons of windings. So you might say, well, isn't that bad? Heck no. A couple of things, you still get great sustain because of course it's a glued neck, not a bolt bolt on neck so there's a ton of sustain from the glued neck and as there would be with a Les Paul um, and to be honest there's a lot of arguments about this but the thing with low output pickups is the magnet allows the string to sustain a little bit more now this is something I'll get a hundred people giving me a different opinion on but the the idea goes if you have an incredibly strong magnet it will actually reduce 
it actually reduces the sustain of the string because it starts dragging the string to a position because it's a magnet. <laughs> and so the low, low output pickups have weaker magnets and tend to have, well, firstly, a little bit more sustain, but more importantly, more tone. So getting into tone. Um, you've got a volume control on the outside here, which I actually think is quite nifty on the guitar because otherwise if I'm trying to do a volume swell here, if that's where it was, it'd be right in the way. So I actually like it over here. That's quick and easy to get to here. It's like, uh, what, ooh, ee, uh, and I'm actually turning the volume up where I'm trying to reach that. So that's a nice little idea. Obviously, you know, Brian and his father thought about these things. The, the whammy bar, the trem arm, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm, I don't use it very often. I don't use it on any guitar, let alone this, but it, it's, it's responsive. It's got full 360 play, so when I don't need it, it just drops out the way. I love that. Um, but essentially... <laughs> there if I need it. But for me, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to take it off for a second so we can talk about the pickups. Now, at the moment with all the switches up here, um, nothing's playing. Now, and this was revolutionary for the period because not only are these on-off switches for each of the pickups, they're also phase reverse for the pickups. Now, Obviously, if the pickups were in exactly the same position, they would cancel each other when phase reversed out. But because they're in slightly different positions, you know, a la Le Strat, as a Strat, they create this beautiful kind of hollowness, which gives this guitar infinite sounds, like so many great sounds. Um, so if I go to the bridge, there's a bridge on. It's got a really great bite. It's great for leads. It's a little clunky and I like that. It's, I just love it. It's really, really cool. Let's go through the pickups one at a time. So that's just that's that's just the bridge. Now we'll go to um, the middle. And for those that want to know, this is a Marshall JMP. It's a real amp. I'm not going to use an emulation of an AC30 with blue bulldogs. I'm using a real amp. The reason why I'm talking about this guitar is this guitar is a player's guitar, but it's also a great session tool because it has tons of different sounds. A lot more than I get from my Strats, from my Les Pauls or whatever. I love all those guitars. I have tons of Yamahas, as you know, but this gives me infinite possibilities. Okay, so now here's just the middle pickup, which is outstanding. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Neck. Neck is just really fat and warm for a little, for, for a small guitar with a single coil, just phenomenal sound. And being responsive and having tone, and obviously going for a tube amp, I can, I can get almost completely clean, sparkly tones out of a neck. <laughs> Just gorgeous. All right, let's try some combinations. Things were on the neck. Let's put the neck and the middle pickup together. Now, we can knock either one of these out of phase. Let's take the neck pickup and put it out of phase. Fantastic. Love it. I'm going to put the other one out of phase. I don't know if it's going to sound any different. In theory, it won't at all because it's just flipping the polarity between the two. But 
you know, it gives you infinite possibilities. Obviously, one of the most exciting things about this guitar is the fact that I can put these two pickups on. So if I want, I can make it more Telecaster-ish. <laughs> It's got that little that twang. It's just great. But let's flip one of those out of phase. So now I'm going to take the bridge and flip the polarity. Oh, it's just a great sound. No other guitar sounds like this. It just takes off some of that muddy low end that we were getting a little bit too much of because the Marshall's got the bass turned up flat out. And now, you just got that Brian May. You know what? Let's pick up the sixpence. Let's use the right, right implement for the job. Oh yeah. You just get a... I'm not used to playing with this, but I bought a couple of hundred of these off eBay. <laughs> you know, why not? So, <laughs> not that I'm a fan, but it's just really, really great. So, all right, what haven't we tried? We haven't tried, um, we haven't tried the bridge and the middle pickup together. <laughs> That's a big... Okay, let's flip the phase of the middle. Oh yes! It's just... What I love about some of the really, really amazing produced guitar music that I grew up on was like how every guitar sound was so sculpted to fit inside of it. And none were better than that, than Queen. Brian May using small amps, you know, using the the, uh, the amp or using AC30s with treble boosters and with all these different tonal uh, capabilities was able to shape amazing guitar sounds. And, you know, that's why I think this is a player's guitar. This is a guitar that's a studio tool. And like I said, it's about $700 odd dollars, you know, off of Brian's website, um, Brian May Guitars. Just phenomenal. So, I love guitar sounds that inspire me to part. Put that back in phase. Out of phase again. It's like, that's a great sound at the end of a song. You want kind of a screaming part over some big chords. You can just, you know. It's gonna bite over the top. Okay, here's honestly one of my favorite sounds. All in phase for leads, okay, and all three pickups. <laughs> Let's take one of them out of phase, the middle. Take the bridge out of phase. The neck. Oh, all three with the neck out. I love it. I love it. And there's just so much I can do with this just by, I think the, the bridge pickup and the neck pickup on their own are pretty spectacular for rhythms. Here's just the middle. I mean,
mean, that's a great funk tone. That's an amp slightly overdriven, my Marshall, and just the, just the middle pickup. <laughs> Anyway, you get it. I love this guitar. I love how versatile it is. I mean, it sounds fantastic. It's really well built. I mean, yeah, it's made in Korea, and maybe there's some snob factor, but I couldn't give a rat's bananas about that. I mean, to me, it's, it's a beautifully made guitar. It's based on probably one of the most original guitars outside, of course, of the classics. I mean, when the Les Paul came out, there was nothing like it. It was a masterpiece. When the Telecaster came out, that was a masterpiece. When the Strat came out, those are defining guitars. Um, I'm a huge fan, as you know. I'd put this pretty close. I mean, it's one of those guitars that uh, it deserves its place in history. Um, Brian's tone alone probably deserves that. Oh, by the way, the big, fat, chunky, Neck for bending. <laughs> Worth it. All right. It's a wonderful guitar, um, highly recommend it. And I think if you're a, a session guitar player and you want more tone and more stuff, just to kind of bring some left of center kind of guitar tones as well as you know really straightforward amazing guitar tones this is a great one to have in your arsenal like i said this is the cheaper one this isn't the fifteen hundred dollar or whatever it is this is a this is the seven hundred dollar ish guitar um, it's really going to be a great tool for if you're a session player and if you're just a studio owner and you want to get away from just having the same two or three guitar sounds this is a really great way of going and you know, it's going to catch people's eye. I personally think it's a beautiful guitar. I love the way it looks. Look, it's a two octave neck. So you've got open E here, octave there, and another octave here. It's almost like he was thinking about shredding in the early 60s. You know, it's like... I mean, that's ridiculous that he thought about that that long ago. I mean, back in like the early 60s, guitar playing, you know, was, was all basically. You know, you listen to the early Stones, it was all. That was it, there was no. There may have been some jazz guys doing that stuff, but. All of the shredding stuff was yet to come, but with Brian's designs that he did with his father, he was well ahead of the curve. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Um, and uh, please ask us any questions. Um, obviously, I'll put links to the site. You can go and check out the guitars on your own. And uh, have a marvelous time recording and mixing. And uh, I'll speak to you all again very soon.